Hey everyone, Jessica Morrison, Realtor with Ferris Property Group in Indianapolis, Indiana. We are back with another indie home interview with David Weekly Homes. We have Heather and Kaylee joining us today. Ladies, welcome to the show. <laughs> I feel like it's <laughs> quite the liberty to call it that. What communities are we talking about today? Uh, we are talking about our community in Harmony, which is located in Westfield as well as our up and coming community in Chatham Village, which is also located in Westfield. Now we've done a video before for those watching that dives really deep into Har the Harmony community. Um, it's my understanding that you guys are almost done and only have a few lots left. What's going on there? I'll let Kaylee talk on <laughs> this one. Yes, yeah, so we are wrapping up in Harmony. We have three opportunities now. So like our big like move-ins, which are like spec homes, uh, we have those. And then we'll have the model. So we'll have four all together, but we have three kind of like right now ready to go that we just are listing. Um, so two, two stories with finished basements and one that's a ranch with kind of a bonus upstairs. Um, so yeah, so a few different opportunities out here, but right now we're we're focusing on the last three that we have in Harmony, and then we will be closing out. I just can't believe it. It seems like yesterday, I remember driving by on 146 and seeing that community get excavated. And, you know, just, it's been a, almost in some ways slow, but steady, just being able to watch those homes increase over time and such a beautiful close-knit community. Um, can we talk really quick for those not familiar about the amenities in this particular neighborhood? Because it's really rare, especially new construction, to find that. Yeah, so um, we have a clubhouse right at the entrance of the community. And in there, you're going to find um, there's three pools. Um, and they're kind of separated into an adult, a family, and then like a kitty splash pool. 24-hour um, fitness inside the clubhouse. Also, there's rooms where you can rent if you're having a party or get together, um, tennis courts, pickleball courts, um, basketball courts, um, two parks, and then a dog park, and all the walking trails and paths throughout the community. So um, Harmony is definitely built on the lifestyle of Harmony, so to speak. Um, so with that, you're not going to see the large um, traditional home sites because we're really gearing more on the lifestyle and what Harmony has to offer through its amenities. That makes a lot of sense and I feel like the growing population for those either working from home or those who just really want to be invested in their families or their career not have to take care of a ton of yard space. Um, this is a really good fit. What's the HOA fee for the Harmony? Um, it's twelve hundred for the year, and uh, homeowner will pay that semi annually. Okay, so is there anything when a client is navigating the different communities coming up? Um, maybe why should they consider the Harmony or maybe other communities that David Weekly has? Do you have any other details about? Um, I don't know if you want to go ahead and segue into this other community that. Um, is coming up for David Weekly? Um, well, first, why Harmony? I think we're at the tail end. So in terms of construction around you, you know, sometimes starting off on a new community, you're going to have construction for quite a while. Someone coming in now, you're really having very minimal construction. And the way we built here in the community, it's almost like in little pods or sections. So Currently, right now, we had 15 homes in our um, in our last section, and all of them, but those three have already started or getting ready to start. So those homes will really be closing out around the same time, which is nice. So you're not going to have that long term um, construction for the community. And then that's also the amenities, which Heather mentioned, now that it's a built up community, you're not just starting the amenities. So when you sometimes first go into a community, a new build like community, the amenities aren't all the way developed yet. Um, so you, you're paying the HOA, but you're still building the amenities. And Harmony 
it's already completely done. So if you're on the tail end of like the construction and then also your amenities are already complete. So absolutely. That's actually really valuable because if you, there's kind of a trade-off. If you start in a brand new community, you build equity as the community develops on top of the market appreciation or with market appreciation, but you have that trade-off. So there might be perks that drew you to the community, but those amenities aren't there yet. And so sometimes it could take, uh, depending on the size of the community, two to five years for that whole development to finish. And I don't know if you're aware, but most consumers move within that um, I feel like it's decreasing year over year how long consumers are spending in their homes. It used to be about seven years as an average. I feel like for my clientele, it's three to five years. And that's not because when I work with people, they don't love their home. It's just that there are so many new housing products available to the market or products that um, might be more attractive to a lifestyle over time or a job change. I mean, I had one family um, build with Pulte. And nine months later, both of their jobs took them to the other side of the city and they were able to move and make a little bit of money on that sale, even though it was only nine months old, but it was still one of those situations where um, you come in with the expectation or maybe not a consumer expectation, but just an excitement about those amenities. And um, where I'm going with this is if you build in a new construction community, and you're only there for five years, it might take that subdivision five years to get there. So it's really nice um, that you kind of have this nice hybrid of getting a new home, like a truly new home with everything all done and all of the amenities there. What do you think? Oh, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Um, I think it's just very easy to sell on that component because it's already it's already there. It's established. They can see what they're getting. So. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, because like the the other trade-off with new construction sometimes that people aren't aware of if they've never lived in that kind of community is just the noise and um, having trucks come down your, um, your road all the time. So to recap, how many lots do you have and are any of them sold or available to be sold? Because sometimes they're coming up to be available for sale. So we have three, um, like Kaylee had mentioned, we have three quick move in homes. So two of them, um, which are the two stories with the finished basement, those are currently listed on the BLC. So okay. those are available for purchase right now. Um, the last one, which is the ranch that Kaylee mentioned with the bonus room, that one we haven't technically started yet. Um, which I would guess in the next couple of weeks, we should see that one starting. So once that gets started, um, we will then get that one listed as well. Um, so that will be available. So currently, if someone was to come in today, we'd have two that um, someone could purchase. Um, and then the ranch will be coming down the road. Okay. Yeah. And I appreciate the recap because I think we might have piqued some people's interest um, just explaining the pros and cons with that. So um, to keep us on track, I know that we did want to talk for a minute about this other community that's coming up in August. What's going on there? I'm super excited. I'll let Kaylee start with that. So the end of August, beginning of September, as we're kind of projected, um, it's out, it's Chatham Village. So it's out in Chatham Hills and it's, we're really excited about it. Yeah, we're super so, excited. Yes. So Kind of what we just talked about, how it's a, it's a new development, but Chatham Hills is not a new development. So the clubhouse, the golf, you know, it's a golf course, there's a clubhouse. Um, it's huge. So a lot of amenities there. That's already established and built as well. So when they go get a new house, a new build, but as far as amenities go and all that, the clubhouse is there because they'll get the social um, club membership with it. So that's kind of nice as far as it's going to be new development, but the clubhouse is already established there. So, and we're thinking, like I said, end of August, beginning of September to start selling out in Chatham Village. So what's your, um, and this is kind of a good question for that other ranch with the basement. Um, that one might be a little bit faster if it's not customized, but maybe kind of walk us through as you're talking about this community. Um, what's your lead time right now as a builder for 
if someone come in priced out on home, how long would it take for them to close? So we are about a seven to nine month build time. Um, I mean, that's pretty much what we're quoting between that, you know, with the market, the way that it is, um, it's really hard to narrow in on a specific mm -hmm. close date until we get much further along. Um, but at this point, we are still feeling comfortable within that seven to nine month build time. So um, I had like three questions converge at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun that then when that happens, but I guess how many, do you know how many home sites are going to be at Chatham Village and um, maybe a quote on what that um, HOA fee will be? Because typically when you have these um, amenities that are very um, much more robust compared to your typical neighborhood, the HOA fee tends to be correlated with that. Are you able to speak into that number at all right now? We haven't, I know we haven't gotten the depth in it. So like Kaylee mentioned, there will be um, the social membership um, to the clubhouse will be included in the price of the home. So then with that, there will be a monthly fee that they will pay as mm -hmm. well. And that hasn't been fully established as to, so I don't feel comfortable in terms of stating a amount there because I don't know if it's set in stone or if we might have they might be tweaking that slightly before yeah. we get there we don't want anybody to get on the hook for something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, liability <laughs> so now I hear that and obviously things are subject to change at any time at uh, even at the time of recording this video um, I feel like too with new developments um things could be presented or um, like, for example, there was a community that was going to build around the golf club of Indiana and Whitestown. Um, These are homes was looking at that for a while. And then it ended up being Lennar and Pulte. Um, so it just depends on how in tune you are with the conversations. And, um, and that's a bit more on a side, mm -hmm. like it's not a consumer direct, um, as something like the social membership would be. But for Chatham Village, like, do you know the quantity of lots? I'm not sure if you answered that or. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so we're gonna start off, well, we have two different products that will be going there. One is a 50 foot product line, which is similar to what we have in Harmony. Um, and then the other is a 90 foot. So the 90s will actually get started more towards the end of the year. But the 50 is what's going to be opening now. And we'll have a total of 96, 96. I believe, 96, 96 yeah. um, 50 foot home sites. We're going to kind of do it in two phases. So there'll be 48 in that um, first phase and then 48 in the second. So for someone who's brand new to real estate or brand new to this discussion, what does 50 foot and 90 foot mean? Nice Sounds like a boat. <laughs> so that's basically the width of your home site. Yeah. Um, so the 50 uh, foot wide or 90 foot wide. Um, and then the depth just really depends on the actual site. Um, yeah. We haven't gotten, we just recently, I should say, we just recently got some of the plots of the land. So I don't know exactly the depth of each. They're going to be slightly longer than um, what you're seeing here in Harmony, but they will have the rear loading garages. So if you're familiar with driving through Harmony um, and kind of how you're just seeing the fronts of the homes and then the garages are in the back, that'll be a similar um, layout to what you'll see in Chatham Village. Yeah. So it's more high density housing. Um, would you say that the green space for Chatham Village is going to be consistent with the Harmony? Is it going to be smaller? Um, I believe space-wise between the homes is gonna be similar to what you're seeing here. We have about 10 feet between our homes here. Um, so not as high density as some communities where there's like zero lot line, you're not going to see that. Um, you will have approximately 10 feet between you and your neighbor. Um, the additional green space areas like you'll see here in Harmony, I'm not quite sure of 
how much of that um, additional common space or green area that you'll have throughout the community. Um, as we get further along and closer to opening, we'll have a better idea of what that's going to look like. Yeah, and another thing to keep in mind, it's kind of hard sometimes for us to say exactly how much is gonna be between the home. Like obviously 10 feet is more of a guarantee at least there. It's gonna depend on what home is built next to you. So it's gonna depend on the actual floor plan and home. So some of our homes here, yeah, there's about 10, 15 feet and others have, you know, double that. It just depends on the home that's being built next to you. So that definitely can vary. Yep. And for those watching who are like, I want at least half an acre, then this housing product is not for you. <laughs> like that's the beauty of housing and building is there's something almost available for everybody. It just always comes back to how much can you afford? Um, I know sometimes um, I, I'll see properties and it's like, my goodness, but it also like location plays a lot into that as far as um, it's just wild sometimes how much homes have appreciated uh, just in the last few years. Um, so I would say like, I'm not speaking on behalf of David Weekly, like this is a generalized statement that um, obviously the housing is available to everyone. But I think if you're someone who's looking for low maintenance, um, easy to take care of, that's the demographic that I see who really appreciates or takes advantage of these products. Would you agree with that or? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Less yard, less to mow right now. Now, as we get to the 90 foot, obviously that'll give people more mm -hmm. that traditional type of home, um, home site, mm -hmm. um, and larger, larger yes. areas. Sure. Um, is there anything else about the homes or floor plans? Um, I know that this is still kind of early in the discussion, but are there other details that you'd like to speak into about the Chatham Village community? Um, um, I was going to say, yeah, we're still getting it all finalized. Um, as far as floor plans, we know we have seven floor plans. Um, three of them are ranches and yes. then uh, four, four two stories. Um, at this point, I believe they will all come with unfinished, unfinished basements. That's awesome because I feel like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I just feel like in new construction, it's getting harder to find um, options with basements anymore, um, especially in Westfield. I feel like there's a lot of products that are like paired patio homes or ranch homes, but they're all on a slab. Are you seeing mm -hmm. that? Well, yeah, I mean, in Harmony yeah. here, we've kind of done both slab or ranch, or I'm sorry, slab or basement. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hearing a little bit of feedback is mm -hmm. all I can really go with on that. As far as our community in Harmony and then, yes, Chatham, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we do basements and out here we do both. But I have heard from some, you know, other clients with other builders and stuff, they are kind of steering away from basements. Um, so... I've heard that a little bit, but as far as with us, we still are offering them. So, but yeah, there people are kind of saying that a lot of builders are going to kind of stopping that right now. I'm not sure if that will change, but we're yeah. still continuing with the basements. Yeah. I know this is speculation, but have you heard any theories as to why they've held off? I haven't. I mean, it's I mean, just been something we've always offered. So I'm not sure of the mindset yeah. of, you know, other builders of why they are not offering it mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. Um, I know the industry is, we all know how the industry is now. So I know obviously digging a basement and doing that, there's contractors involved and more labor and stuff. So I don't, we have, again, we don't know. I mean, you know, we don't know why they're not doing it. I don't know if it's a time thing. I don't know. Cost. It's, cost. it's probably a yeah. little bit of costs and labor and all that is what, if I would have to guess that may be why they're steering away from it. Um, but I don't know for sure. That's okay. I was just curious. Um, people talk, so and it's okay <laughs> yes. that you don't know. <laughs> um, it's especially if you can hear things from different angles. So my theory is that um, it's probably a variety of factors, um, and if there's any challenges in construction, it's always a combination of labor and cost, usually. Mm -hmm. So, and if yep. they're trying to meet deadlines, I feel like basements have the potential to delay things because they need things to dry out. 
So I don't know, or, um, yeah. No, all of that is actually, uh, um, yeah, it's very valid and, um, yeah, definitely things that we see across the board. I think we've just always, some of our communities are just slab communities, Mm -hmm. but, um, the ones we're talking about, yeah, we're giving options. Yeah. So for those watching, this is awesome because if you want to build something with a basement and customize that, um, you know, definitely talk to David Weekly. Speaking of customizing, I feel like it's a coin toss right now. If you don't know the different builders, don't know what they offer um, production versus smaller or more local, um, you sometimes don't know the ability that you have with customizing. Um, if a client walks through um, your model today, is interested in building at Chatham, at this point in time, obviously subject to change, um, what are the customizations that they're able to do? So with our plans, um, we do allow where someone can add what we call flex options or structural changes to the home, such as adding like a covered porch or a fireplace or um, adding a super shower, let's say in the owner's bathroom. Um, so we allow for some alterations to the, the plan. Um, but in terms of someone coming in and saying, Ooh, I'd like to move that wall and I want to put it, you know, I want to make this room larger and things like that. We're not allowing. Um, so the plan is how the plan is. And then you can make those uh, changes with the flex options. But then the nice thing about it, which some builders are not doing, Um, is we're still allowing people to design um, with the finishes of their home. So we have a very large design studio where um, buyers are going to go there and they'll pick out and everything from flooring to counters and cabinets, everything, everything. Yeah. So they can really um, kind of personalize their home uh, that way. In contrast, depending on the builder that you're talking to, some builders for those not aware, um, is especially in the spec home part of it, um, those finishes can be pre-selected. And so it's, or some builders are just, here's your package. This is what we've allocated for this home site. And you just kind of take it or leave it. And, you know, I think depending on who you're talking to, some people are just either desperate or just really need housing enough that they're willing to work with that. Um, because that house is able to meet their needs for a few different reasons. But I do appreciate on behalf of consumers that you have the ability to customize things because I would imagine where this price point is going to end up that customizations are still going to be really important. I know you don't have a number yet, but do you have an idea maybe on where things are going to be price-wise? It's just so hard to determine at this point. And just to clarify, so Um, to kind of tag to what you were just saying about the quick move-in homes or the spec homes, those particular homes, um, our designers will design those. Mm -hmm. And at this point, there are no changes in those homes just because of ordering product and materials. Um, So making changes is a lot more difficult now Mm -hmm. than it was maybe before the markets kind of changed. We usually say, you know, for someone who's really wanting to maybe do a lot of different things, such as like trim detail or, you know, whatever it might be, Mm -hmm. that they might be someone that would be perfect to build from scratch from what we call a dirt sale. Um, So they're kind of doing everything, the designing and, and all options. But if someone, maybe doesn't, maybe need something sooner. Um, maybe that quick move in is already started and they don't have as much preference in design, then um, the quick move in obviously would be a great option right. for them. Okay. Do you know if there are any planned quick move in homes scheduled for the Chatham Village community? There is actually Heather and I were, are just going over those. So we will start with four um, quick move-ins out in Chatham to start. Okay. So we're still finalizing them. We don't have all the information, but we're kind of going to the floor plans. So Heather and I will are picking those and finishing them. 
what we're going to have in Chatham, but there'll be four. Um, so we'll finish kind of the structural of it and then it'll go through design. But um, yeah, so for now there'll be four starting. Okay. And to clarify for those watching, is there a difference between spec homes and click move-ins as far as the customizations that will be done? So there'll be the customizations will be pre-selected by the builder for the quick move-ins. Yep. yep. So a quick move-in, I mean, that's what we call it. Sometimes people are used to call yeah. spec homes, but it's the same thing. Um, we just call it quick move-ins with David Weekly, but all the design options, everything will be already selected for that home. Yep. Yep. And do you know when, I know you're starting to sell in August, do you know when those homes would be completed roughly? Gosh, probably that, I mean, figuring that seven to nine months. Yeah. So I would say within the first quarter of next year. Yeah, like yeah. March, April, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so seven, seven to nine months. So that's if someone comes in and we start selling. So Heather and I start selling in August or September, then that's the first quarter, probably next year, we would project them to be finishing. Mm -hmm. Of course, if someone comes in at the end of this year to buy, they're not going to, we still have the seven to nine month time frame. So it's going to depend on when they buy. But yeah, when we first start in August and September, if they purchase, then we project them to be the first quarter of this next year. Okay. And then to wrap this interview up and be respectful of your time, I know we could talk for a long time about new construction. <laughs> um, what would you say is one or two things that really sets David Weekly apart? And then one or two tips for buyers who are considering building a new home in the Indianapolis area? Um, I'll, I'll do one of the, okay. the differences and then give it over to Heather. But I would say one main um, difference that we can agree on is our customer service. Mm -hmm. So we're very customer service driven at David Weekly. Um, we survey you throughout the whole process. We want to make sure you're truly happy. You're very involved um, as much as you want or as little as you want in the process. We do what we call a weekly call with our homeowners. So it's us as one of us, and then it's going to be your private builder. Um, and then we'll call you every week and tell you what we've done in your home and then what we're doing the next week and what's scheduled. And we're very, we're also like a very proactive builder, builder instead of a reactive builder. Um, so we just always keep the clients involved and up to date. Um, like I said, we're just very customer service driven the whole time. Yep. I have a client building with you guys over in the lakes at Shady Nook right now. Oh, and great. I yeah. can, good. I can attest that that's been a great <laughs> process. And um, good. Good. Yeah, Amanda's been great and um, clients are happy. Home's coming along just fine and um, definitely appreciate the communication there. So I have other builds that are a little different in that department. So <laughs> it's, um, it's definitely appreciated, even from the realtor aspect, the sometimes I feel like we have to really fight to say like, hey, I want to be involved or please include me in the communication. And they've done a very good job of making sure that that's the case because we appreciate hearing those updates as well with consumers. So that's good. Yeah, yeah we definitely want to keep everybody involved. You know, I mean, it's seven to nine months, you're building a, a pretty um, close relationship with the buyers, you know, and we just, we, I probably get more excited on some of the things Same. that they yeah. do. You just get so, you just love all that when, you know, the options start getting put in and you can see other design uh, choices. So it just makes the, it's exciting. It's exciting for so, all of us. Yeah. yeah. All of it, watching it come together. We get so excited yep. to watch every single home that we're building come together. So it's, it's definitely exciting. It's fun. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing with David Weekly um, that probably sets us a little bit apart, um, you know, we do what we call a, a life design, the way that we plan our homes. So when you walk in the front of the door, your front door, we want you to be able to see all the way to the back of your home. So very open concept to our floor plans. And we don't always compete with other builders in terms of their square footage. But the way we utilize our square footage in your home is very functional. So there's not a lot of empty pockets of, you know, what do I do with this space? I have, you know, all this room here and it really doesn't make sense. You're not going to find that with our floor plans. There's just really good traffic patterns and good use of the square footage. Um, so every spot in your home has a purpose. Um, and so that's kind of what we referred to as our life design. 
And then really behind our walls, we do more of an advanced wall frame system. So we do a exterior uh, two by six wall as opposed to a standard two by four, um, which a lot of builders are using. And what that two by six basically does is it allows us to insulate your home a lot better. Mm -hmm. So we, we definitely pride ourselves on building very energy efficient homes. So, you know, not only what we're giving you kind of you know, face to face with the customer service, but just in our building and kind of behind the walls, which a lot of people, you know, not always are in tune to, um, we're kind of hitting all areas with our building. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. If a client is um, interviewing different builders, maybe what are a couple of questions you would encourage them to ask? I would say, uh, well, there's a few now with the industry. The yep. top one we can say is always make sure if you, you purchase a home or you go on contract that you're locked into that price. That's a big one we kind of yep. get back. So when you purchase with David Weekly, whatever you sign the contract for, as far as like a quick move in, mm -hmm. expect yep. home, that does prices and change. Um, and then we obviously go over other options and stuff, but you your price is your price. I know like the materials are still going up and stuff. So a lot of builders are actually having the consumers pay that cost increase, even as their home's being built, we don't do that. Um, that's a big one to make sure you just know financially what's going, kind of going on with the contract. Besides mm -hmm. that, just like Heather said, you know, behind the walls, you go into all these models and bells and whistles and you see all this, but always make sure you see the bones of the home, which we're big on, how tight the home is, you know, built, the two by sixes. So you definitely want to know what's going on behind the walls and how the home's being built. Um, and then also, like we touched on being involved, um, just, just ask how the process goes and how involved will they be and how will updates go. And because we have something called also a buyer site. So we upload photos almost weekly of the home and we keep the buyers, you know, and our homeowners really up to date on everything. So they're very hands on with it and we, they see everything. Mm -hmm. So that's something important to ask different builders. Cause I know some builders in general, you kind of, you're not very involved in the process and yeah. some people want to be. So that's, that's usually a good question to ask too. Like what that process looks like. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to tell if a builder sales rep is like bluffing on something like that? <laughs> like, I mean, Sorry. Well, I'm, I mean, I, 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 just, I, to be honest, I, I'm not sure. Um, I know for us, um, you know, we have like in our model, in all the models, there's a, what we call a quality room. So it really kind of shows all of our building practices and yeah. um, talks a lot about the energy efficiency and things. So I guess the biggest thing is, you know, what information would um, other builders have that back up the data that they're sharing. Um, right. And I feel yeah. like, you know, we definitely have, um, whether it's a pamphlet or whether it's our quality room, you know, different things that really talk about our process and what we do. We also have a, what we call a homeowner portfolio, which when someone signs a purchase agreement, they will get that. It's it's really a book that's going to have everything from start to finish of their home and even beyond that with our warranty. But everything about our process is really mapped out in this portfolio. Yeah. So anything that Kaylee and I are talking about is really just dittoed in the um, portfolio book. Yeah, even like the, all the steps of construction and what each step like and tells and what's going to be going on during each stage of construction it tells the the buyer you know and the homeowner kind of a little more about exactly what's going on because mm -hmm. they're not usually probably in construction um so it kind of helps break it down for them as well yeah i think where i was going with that question is i think sometimes i've seen people say that they're going to do things with communication prior to a client mm -hmm. signing the contract and then um, yeah. like it feels like sometimes it just I feel like it's very hit or miss and I don't mean to be critical of an industry. I'm always looking at how can I improve that client experience? Sure. But then there's things that um, even if we're following up, like it, it's just interesting how like hit or miss it can be. And that might not even be builder specific. It could be a sales rep 
specific. So would you say that yeah. if they can itemize like what you guys just did with itemizing the types of things that you do and then referring back to that portfolio, are those um, you alluded earlier to being a proactive builder? Um, would you say that the systems that you have in place for follow up and communication throughout the build process are something that um, are included and in when you're setting that expectation from the beginning, like is that list of things in the portfolio? um that you get yeah yeah absolutely um so kind of to tag on to what kaylee was talking about earlier how we survey our um our buyers throughout the process yeah. you know, we want to make sure we do little um check-ins uh checkpoints with them to make sure it's going the way that they want it to be mm -hmm. um so everything that we just said that we do that's across company-wide yeah. Um, so that's not just maybe just one particular consultant likes to follow up and do that's David Weekly's process. Yeah. So, um, even if maybe a consultant, let's say was falling short on something, our builder is going to come in and be like, Hey, we've got to do our weekly calls. So, yeah. um, it just, there's really not a lot of room to make that not consistent because yeah. if it is where we're lacking, they're going to get surveyed and ask those specific questions. Did your you know, uh, yeah. consultant reach out to you weekly? Did they follow up? Did they keep you updated? Yep. It's very important for us to um, follow through with those processes. And we have you know, things that catch us if we're not. So um, it's, it's just important to us as a company that we continue to do that. So outside of other companies that possibly don't, I can't necessarily speak for those companies, but I can speak for David Weekly and how important it is for us to um, just really give the best service that we possibly can to our buyers. So yeah. it's a, a good experience for everybody involved. Right? Yeah, and I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. There are, <laughs> there are a variety of factors as to why um, and I'm not interested in making excuses for people either, because I do think, especially in building, there's a lot of emotion that gets invested throughout that process. And so that's why I'm spending so much time clarifying the communication process, because I have even just witnessed with clients, like you guys do a great job. Um, but I think, um, you know, COVID is still around. It's not as I think popular in some areas as it used to be, but um, you know, it's, I can see why on some level, like, you know, if someone left a position and they're having to fill or, um, again, like you don't want to make excuses for people, but I, I do want to try and have empathy for what builders are going through right now, because it's not easy. <laughs> so, um, especially on the staffing side. So, um, Ending on a high note here, we've got obviously the lots av available in the Harmony to close out that community, enjoy all of those amenities right from the start, or get instant equity, as we like to call it, starting from a brand new community over at Chatham Village. Um, what is the best way for people to connect with you both if they have further questions? Either... Um... They can reach out to us uh, directly by going into the David Weekly website. It's going to be the easiest way um, to just mm -hmm. uh, connect with us, um, where they can reach just to the model or mm -hmm. yeah, our um, emails yeah, are on website, there as well. Mm -hmm. Website, you can, if you go to Harmony, like David Weekly in Westfield, there is a Harmony one. You scroll down, you'll actually see Heather and I both on there. You can just click on one. Wherever you click on, that information will go to whichever of us. Mm -hmm. And then we will that one will contact you. Um, so you can go that way. That goes to our emails personally. Call the model, of course, that's on there. Or you can stop into the model. We're here uh, seven days a week. So you can definitely come into, can come into the model as well and talk to us. One of us will be here. Um, so yeah, yeah. so yeah. In, in any of those ways. Okay, great. Well, all of that will be available in the description of this video. Um, obviously, things are subject to change. So just because we've talked about it today, do check um, the current um, 
data points, I guess, <laughs> that we talked about in the future. Um, and I'll always refer back to your contract if you have specific contract questions. Um, I'm happy to connect people with a real estate attorney if that's necessary. Um, I'm trying to let you guys off the hook in a way because I know this is a recorded <laughs> interview, but um, it was definitely a pleasure to connect with you both, uh, Kaylee and Heather. And um, if you guys who are watching this found this video valuable and don't have a realtor, it would be an honor to represent you. My cost is included in the build price of the home. That's not something the builder will ever negotiate below. So mention this video um, if you inquire on your website so we can work together. Thank you so much, ladies. I hope you both have a wonderful day. Thanks so Thanks. much. We appreciate it. Bye.